Hello, Dr. Dave back here with you again. Some of my subscribers have been requesting a, another video. I haven't made any videos in a while. I have a, a lot more things to tell you, but I've, I've really been working hard on my book. We're almost to the stage of getting it published. It should be out in March or April, and then the name of the book is My Dance with the Zodiac Killers. 38 years stalked by a serial killer. What I'm going to tell you about today is something that happened to me when I was, I don't know, six or eight years old. I have several uh, stories to tell you, and I've told you some of them already, that happened next door to a grocery store in a little woodsy area there where uh, the Zodiac Killer, these guys were burying bodies in there. I actually saw them digging in there one time and putting something that looked like a carpet wrapped up into a, a, a cylinder into the ground to cover it up. There was an issue where they started a fire in there to confuse the police. There was uh, two or three attacks where they attacked me. But I'm going to tell you this one today because it's almost kind of funny. And, uh, and it's also something that Frank brought up to me years later in Mexico City. Um, because John Anglin got his finger broke in this attack. Now, I really need some actors to show this to you, but I don't have them, so I'm going to do the best I can. You're going to have to picture John Anglin standing in the middle, Frank Morris on his left, and John's brother Clarence on his right. Now, John is holding a broom handle in his right hand like this. <laughs> it wasn't red. He always used natural wood color that way. It was probably easier to throw it away or it was harder to see and wherever they were going it kind of blended in with everything. But his little broom handle that he used for what Frank called beating them down, beating kids senseless so that they could torture them and kill them. And He's standing there holding the, the stick, and Frank is on, over here on his left, and they all approached me, and Frank says, take your pants down. Now remember, that's exactly the tactic that he used on one of his victims in the Texarkana Moonlight Murders when he played the part of the Phantom. And I didn't know what to do. I was a little kid, and he was uh, very, he knew how to sound very parental, um, like a teacher. So I started unbuckling my pants. I wasn't planning on taking them down, but I wasn't sure what to do. And Frank says, put them back up. And I started thinking, you know, I'm going to need to run pretty soon. I need to get them buckled so that I'm not tripping over my clothes when I take off. And he, they, they kept looking at each other and smiling like they were, it really turned them on that I was compliant with what they were telling me to do. And it also amazed them. I suppose nobody ever reached to do what they asked them to. And they made some sexual references in there too uh, that I'm not going to say here on YouTube. But anyway, then Frank says, you know you got a beating coming for being out here, don't you? So I looked at him and I figured, well, if I can turn around, now the store was behind me, if I can turn around, I can run. So I'm going to act like I'm going to turn around and bend over. And I did it real slow and I was finishing buckling my, my belt. And he motions to Clarence and Clarence whips off his belt. And this belt had a big steel bar on it on each side. And he took the belt and, and Frank says, we're not going to beat your ass, we're going to beat your face. And Clarence swung that belt at me, you know, right at my face, at like my temple level. And I ducked and stepped back, and when I did, he whacked John right in the hand. And John goes, God damn, you broke my finger! <laughs> and they all started huddling around each other, and I turned and ran and ran in back into the store. 
Now, I did not know at the time that these were the same three guys who had attacked me over on Minnehaha Street. I, it, it took me until here recently to put together the fact that all these attacks were the same three people. I think I've explained that to you enough times that you probably know it. And they were very good at confusing you with their identity, which is another reason that it was very difficult for law enforcement to catch these guys. They usually wouldn't show up three at a time unless they knew they already had you alone. This was one of those times that they did. Now, after that, there were a couple of more events that happened at that store. I think I've told you about one of them. But I will tell you that after I, I don't know if it was that same day or, or another day that we went to the store and I was sitting down on the floor looking at comic books and I decided I'd better go look for my mom to make sure she wasn't checking out already at the, at the front to pick up her groceries. And I looked down at the end of the, the aisle there in the store and there stands John Anglin. So I got up, kind of scared, and I turned to look the other, other end of the aisle, and there's Clarence Anglin. Now, I think I already told you the story where I kicked John Anglin in the shin, and uh, kicked him pretty hard. Well, I kicked him as hard as I could. But anyhow, I went down there to the end, and I just squared off with him. I mean, I'm a little kid, you know, six, seven years old, and he's a grown man, six feet tall. And I just looked at him like, I'm going to kick you again. And I hauled off and I got my leg backed up and got ready to kick. And he stepped out of the way and I took off running. And, you know, I, I, it just amazes me because we told the manager of the store on one occasion. They called the police on another occasion. And these guys still not only got away, but they were going out into the woods right beside of the... the uh, a grocery store and they were burying the bodies of the kids that they were killing and you could see them out there doing it from in the store they would park in the store parking lot but they would bring them wrapped up in a carpet and they'd bury the carpet there another wild and crazy story of Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers the Zodiac killers and a true story and another close call for Dr. Dave Thank you very much.